Recording. And formally welcome everyone to our weekly call. Hope you've had all, all had a great weekend. Um, right, in terms of our agenda for this week, um, we're, we're going to kick off here in, in, in a moment with a an update on Rule 53, I think, with uh, hopefully some even more outlandish, outlandish uses of uh, DNS uh, than uh, about 12 months or so ago. <coughs> um, uh, well, although I know Peter's sort of shared the presentation in, in between, so... Uh, uh, you, I think you've got a good chance of having a decent up, update from 12 months ago, Peter, uh, uh, no, in, in terms of uh, weird and wonderful uses. Of <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, sorry, uh, you go ahead, Dan, uh, uh, It's all right. And then as, as always, I'll, I'll rattle through some recent developments, uh, including touching on um, some uh, code that uh, Neil Cook has recently uh, produced to help with the adoption of DNR uh, amongst uh, a number of other things um, and we sort of talk through forthcoming events etc etc and as always hopefully have time for uh, any other business uh, at the end so with that in mind why don't I stop talking uh, or more importantly stop sharing my screen um, so you're not staring at, at, a, at a slide um, and hand over to Peter um to, to talk about the dns uh, uh which yeah uh, hopefully with obscured um ip addresses uh, uh well as you know what i i looked more so uh it was pointed out in some of the backgrounds that um uh I, when i was talking about privacy it's, there was ip addresses in, in the background of the, of the slides i looked more closely at them and they're not actual real ip addresses so i <laughs> i did check into that yeah, uh, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like two eight nine dot dot seven six dot whatever. They're not valid IP, so yeah. Right, just um, yeah. So and, thanks, Andrew. And, and and as you kick off on Rule Fifty Three, I know Michael had an observation on uh, on on Rule Thirty Four. Just to uh, oh yeah. To, uh, Michael wants to unmute and share that thought uh, or memory from an earlier ITF. Oh, the sound isn't helping that. Uh, we'll maybe come back to that thought at the at the NP to see if the uh, connection. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that sounded make... a bit robotic. Uh, couldn't quite make out what. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Um, what you were saying there. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, anyway, rule fifty-three. Yeah. Over to you. Rule fifty-three. Um, I put this in uh, the slides. I, I, I think most people, uh, I know you guys, but yeah, I'm Peter Lowe. I'm the principal security researcher at DNS Filter. Uh, we do DNS services, protected DNS services um, for companies. Uh, so I spend a lot of time thinking about DNS and malware techniques and how DNS can be. Um, uh, I say misused, but how it can be used um, in different ways. Uh, I've worked in DNS security for about three years, 27 years in tech, and you might know my block list for ads and trackers. Um, yeah, so ask me about DNS abuse. A lot of these things that I'm going to go through have uses in the, the malware world. Um, so DNS tunneling in particular and beaconing and things like that. I think I might do a separate presentation one day or add a new section to this which is just about malware techniques. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I have a terrible Twitter habit, uh, which is now turning into a Mastodon habit. Uh, you can find me here. Um, I had thought about different titles for this. Um, and I, I'd, so some of them are like clickbaity, you know, how I learned to stop worrying and love DNS, the things people do, do all these kind of things. The DNS Museum is actually something I'm seriously considering putting together like a wiki or something with one page for each of these things because they keep um, disappearing. And um, I think it would be good to have like a place where we can archive these amazing things that people have done with DNS. There's a few names as well, which keep coming up. Um, so we could have a kind of hall of fame, which would be kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, DNS is um, uh, you know, an incredible protocol. It's one of the, the ones which has stuck around in, in pretty much the same way since it came out in you know, 40 years ago, however long ago it was. Um, 
Uh, it's it's uh, highly available, highly resilient, very fast, and it's a fundamental part of the internet. You can get away with just using IP addresses, but um, really everything uses uh, DNS. Um, so, of course, everybody, well, not everybody, people, some people have done some interesting things with it. Um, the basic way it works is that you send a question to a resolver, which gives an answer. It's, it's a, a directory service. Um, and but the thing with the general record system is that it can be um, expanded into a lot of different things, um, which we'll see some of. Um, it all started because I'm uh, part of this uh, uh, special interest group as the, uh, um, in FIRST, which is the DNS Abuse SIG. And we were joking about how, um, <clears throat> how nobody's done actually uh, um, malware distribution via DNS, um, which according to the rules of the internet, once you think of something, it brings it into existence. Um, so I think now that we thought about it, it's, um, yeah. But John, John Todd uh, is the co-chair of uh, the uh, DNS abuse and I blame him entirely for having put this together. I started posting things on Twitter as a, as a thread there and it got quite long. Uh, so I decided to put it together into a, a little presentation. But yeah, don't suggest anything too crazy because um, we don't want to end up with anything um, that's really going to break the internet. Um, yeah, a couple of notes that most of these things aren't around anymore, unfortunately. Um, a lot of them are screenshots that I've kind of taken from, you know, Google Images or something, which I hope I'm not going to get in too much trouble for. Um, there's a big list of links at the end, and I really don't like doing slides. So apologies um, for the terrible slides. I, I really have to sort of redo them, but the more slides I add, the more difficult it, it um, you know, it seems like it's going to be, and the less likely I am actually going to be to reformat them all. So starting off with um, a, a group, uh, which uh, trace routes, which is perhaps not 100% DNS, uh, but I think it kind of is because you're setting up the reverse for IP addresses. These all work in basically the same way um, that they set up a static route somehow. Uh, so when you trace route from one place to another, you always go through the same set of IPs and those IPs have reverse host names or reverse entries set up so that they show up and um, read out something fun or interesting. The first one I ever saw was um, by a guy called Ryan uh, Verba or Weber uh, from Beagle.net in uh, 2013. And this is one of the, the things that kind of got me interested in. Well, I've always been interested in DNS, but, you know, one of the kind of, oh, hey, you can do that kind of reactions. Um, he uh, took it down quickly. This is the Star Wars introduction, by the way. You can't really see it in that screenshot. Again, another reason why I need to do these slides uh, again, because... Um, but yeah, you trace through and it gives you the, uh, it's a, a period of civil war, rebel spaceships are striking from a hidden base, etc. And it's even got the kind of, um, the, the angle thing going to the, uh, the last line there. Um, some IPv6 versions came up, but um, yeah, I don't think they're around anymore, as far as I could tell anyway. Um, there's another one, hand.bb0.nl, which is a, a, a little strange. Um, this is using IPv6. Um, you can see here up to uh, 30, 35 hops. Uh, apparently, if you increase the number of hops, you can get even further. I still don't have IPv6 on my workstation, well, my laptop. So I, I didn't do this myself. But um, yeah, it's a, um, this is, I think, a part of a, a BBS or something like that. Um, a really cool one here by a guy called Sebastian Haas. He actually created um, a thing called Fake Root which is where you can have a, a local tunnel device, uh, which you can set up a static route on. Um, and if you hit that from the outside, it will go internally, it will send it through a certain route. So you can set up an external trace route, which will end up like this, where he um, uh, set up a, a, the results from the Euro 2020 uh, soccer, so um, football match, football matches, sorry. Um, yeah, so this was pretty cool. You could actually see what they were in, in real time. I'm not, I think he might have been updating them by by hand, or but I'm not sure. It, it's pretty cool anyway. Um, you can actually see what the scores were in real time. Um, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> this one here from, from makerforce.io. Um, this is um, to the tune of American Pie, some alternate lyrics, which is, um, um, 
I, I, the, 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 oh yeah, it's about laptops and, and networking and um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why I included that one. And yeah, there's another site called bad.horse, which is a little bit famous. Um, it's, um, there's a, a show, um, oh, hang on a second. This is, yeah, from Dr. Horrible Sing Along. Um, so if you go to YouTube and check out Dr. Hor Horrible Sing Along, you will see these lyrics there. Um, there's a, a bonus as well. If you look at the SSL certificate chain, um, there's another little Easter egg there for this site. This is a, a screenshot from, from uh, Dr. Horrible reading out the, the letter. Yes, you um, know. Yes, you know. And at the time, um, which was a year or so ago, um, Andrew said that I should include something festive. And I did manage to find a Christmas themed uh, trace route, which again, I don't think exists anymore, but it's pretty cool. And I've left it in there because I just like it. Um, so the second section is tools and toys. I, I When I first did this, I thought I, I would find more tools and toys and, and little games, but it's, um, and I was a bit disappointed not to find more, but this has started to, to expand a little bit. Um, so yeah, here's, here's one of the first ones was a calculator. Uh, this is a, um, you, you, there's, a, there's another version of this later on from um, Stefan Bortzmeier, but um, this is the first one I saw from postel.org, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not around anymore again, but uh, there's a screenshot of it. And um, yeah, this is a reverse Polish notation. So again, I need to update the slides. <laughs> Someone pointed out to me when I did it before that this was uh, this is Polish notation. So, yeah, I'm not a calculator expert. So, but very cool. You can dynamically uh, do calculations via DNS. It, it's I mean on its own not spectacular, but uh, shows you the kind of potential for for these kind of things. Um, the one which I think is actually useful, and I, I have used this before, is. Uh, just a, a DNS lookup to tell you what your external IP address is. Common thing for people to do, especially network admins when they connect to a new network, uh, to see what your external facing IP is. So if you could just go to myip.org or Google, what is my IP? Um, there's sites which will just tell you, and this is a way to do it over DNS, which is, I think is great. Um, it's much easier to script than a website and you can do it from the command line, uh, it's quicker as well. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I think that this is a, this is a classic XKCD comic that Google Plus is or Google is shutting down another another service. Um, unfortunately, famous for doing that kind of thing. And uh, except the only thing that they that has remained stable is a dot a dot a dot a their DNS server. It will never ever go away. I think, uh, which means that the my IP service will should hopefully exist the whole time. This is a cool little, um, there's a few different versions of this, a cool uh, service, which is uh, translates IPs to their ASN number or ASN information. Uh, you can see some examples of how to use it here. Uh, there's a link to the documentation at the end, um, but it's, yeah, it's it's great from Team Cymru, um, the threat intelligence providers, the threat researchers. Um, and um, yeah, if you, for networking admins, it's kind of useful. Um, some Perhaps less useful ones. Um, there's an example here on find.me.uk where you can look up um, postcodes. Uh, this is a Kingston postcode, which is close to me, UK postcodes, that is. Um, and it will give you the, the geolocations of it. Um, and uh, another one from Jan Piet Menz uh, at the bottom here, which is for um, uh, German postcodes, I think, so zip codes there. Um, this is the first one, I think, is, yeah, the first one is by the amazing Tony Finch um, from the uh, Cambridge Office of Epithets and Numerology at Cambridge University. Uh, he, by the way, is one of the more interesting people I've uh, met, and especially on Twitter. I do not know how he manages to consistently get such, he, he does retweets of really obscure and interesting, but very funny uh, things. And I, I don't know if he follows all these people or how else he finds them, but yeah, definitely worth following. Um, this one is another one from Sebastian Haas and, and close to my heart because I, I like geocaching. Um, if you're not familiar with geocaching, it's, um, it's a, if you're feeling with Pokemon Go, it's kind of like that. You basically have to go out in the world and find uh, 
things, find boxes with uh, stuff in them. And there's a couple of million of them, two or three million of them worldwide. You can go anywhere in the world and find them. And you go to the website and there's a clue um, for each one. And uh, the clue for one of them is Dodnik's, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself if I try and say this. It's what you can see on the screen <laughs> um, by a username Mocha Petrus underscore 1876, um, which is just Sebastian apparently. And it's got uh, the first hint is uh, you have to look, well, is this just a host name? Which, if you look it up, the, the TXT record for it will give you um, the first clue, which is pretty cool. Apparently, um, Sebastian told me that the uh, Dr. Paul Mokropetris, the inventor of DNS, is not, wasn't actually included in the catch. It was just a reference to him. Um, this is a cool one by a guy called Craig Mayhew. Um, it's a text adventure by DNS. It, it, once you know how it works, it's kind of, it seems quite simple, but it's kind of fun. Um, and a, a really interesting way of looking of uh, using how um, you know sort of dynamic um, uh, host names uh, and round robin. So there's some you can it's just choose your own adventure. You can say go up or left or right, whatever, or east, north, west. And um, there's some places where you get options about what to do, and you can use uh, round robin DNS uh, for chance based actions. It tells you what happens next, which is very cool. The source is actually go really interesting to go and look at. Um, and it defines a couple of shell functions you can, uh, so you can say go north, go up, um, et cetera. Um, there's a website called dns.toys, which is very cool. Um, there's a few different things on there. They have a currency conversion uh, lookup. Uh, they have the world time, an IP echo, which is the same as the, the what is my IP thing uh, from earlier. Numbers to words, which I genuinely don't know how that would be useful or even work correctly, but it's kind of cool that they put it up. Um, and uh, a usable uh, side range. So um, for network admins, that's a kind of, um, I, yeah, I, I haven't had to deal with networks for a while myself. So uh, I say fortunately don't have to use that, but uh, might be useful for some people. By a guy called um, Kalash Nad. For, who's the CTO of a, quite a big company called Zeroda in, uh, in India, I think. There's a few other things there. There's um, a Pi lookup, and um, there's a current currency conversion we've got on there. There's a unit conversion as well. I think weather and world time as well. So <laughs> um, DNS.toys, this is an accurate uh, username, and a, and a good use of that TLD. And um, Stefan Bortzmeier, um, another person who seems to be just on a search for what can you do with DNS. Um, he's created a, a dynamic DNS server called Drink, um, which you can see the help text on the screen here. You can also do all sorts of different things, and he keeps on adding new things to it. So it's a, the, the, the server itself is a kind of like a front end to a, you know dynamic tools that you can plug in. Um, he, oh, sorry, I, I messed up the formatting here, but he wrote to me that you can actually do 2 plus 2 dot op dot din dot butzmeyer dot fr and um that would I, I did not know that you could put pluses in host names but apparently that does that should work um he's also suggested he's got uh, other um variations of things that you can use there so that using the lock and uri query types um you can get around a random location and, and the url from uh, being wikipedia um and um, if you hit query random.din.portsmire.fr, which I think is a cool use of the different types of uh, different record types, since we were talking about that earlier. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's he also wanted to plug it into chat GPT so that you could just uh, query uh, what dot is dot the dot answer dot, uh, you know, to the um, life to the universe and everything and um, get an answer back. But apparently ChatGPT's API is a bit too slow. So and unfortunately didn't get to implement that, but maybe with some advances in ChatGPT, we'll be seeing that. You can have a, a GPT DNS or something. It'll just um, tell you the IP address of the host name it thinks you're trying to get to, um, but, but we'll see. Um, big section for tunneling. Some of these aren't quite tunneling and some of the other things are tunneling as well. Um, it depends on your exact definition, but I, this is how I put it through together. The tunneling itself is a kind of an interesting thing. It basically, it's um, 
using a, a protocol for a, a, a purpose that it wasn't intended for. It's, it's tunneling one protocol over another or something over something else. And that's where it starts to break down. It's like, what is it that you're sending over it? Can it is it just a few bytes uh, or is it a whole, you know, a whole piece of data or a whole file or whatever? But yeah, in, in general, that's the, the idea. The first time I saw it mentioned was in 2000, but I think the general concept has been uh, around for much longer than that. I think in the instant that any anything makes it to RFC standards, is then uh, RFC status, um, it, somebody's going to start tunneling something over it. Um, Wikipedia is the first example that I've I found. Um, you can actually look up um, a Wikipedia page by going to it. Uh, wp.dg.cx and you can see here that it even works with Unicode by a guy called this is by a guy called Dave Ledbetter um, he wrote a custom Perl based um, DNS server and he actually used a, a static backend so he had a, a, an XML dump that he used uh, to put in there uh, hasn't been updated for a while um, and I'm not sure if this still works but I think the code is available on GitHub that again links at the end um, this is pretty cool, though. I mean, just, yeah. I, I, and again, I can see occasions where this might be useful for people. It's it's fun, and it's definitely not what DNS, you know, people uh, wouldn't have thought. Of. It's not the first thing I thought of when I think of DNS is, you know, get Wikipedia pages over it. But, you know, DNS is super quick, and getting a text record is very quick, and this could be useful in an airport or something if you're stuck and wanted to look something up. Um, this one is actually really cool. So blog posts, this is blogging via DNS. This was great because you could not only read blog posts, uh, you can actually publish um, uh, posts as well, which I loved. And you can you can do all the basic things that you need to do in a, in a blog. And, you know, blogs these days are very fancy and they've got pop-ups and everything, but what you really wanna do is write a post, list them and read them. And you can do all that via text records, which is brilliant. Um, apparently this uh, Harsha Charm was trying to break coder's block and that's how he came up with this, which is the best excuse for uh, creating anything. Um, there is a generic, this is proper tunneling, I think. This is uh, IP over DNS. Um, it also, the name for this is, uh, this is a, a package called iodine, which I love because it has the atomic number uh, 53, uh, a standard DNS port, and um, it's IOD, which is IP over DNS. So it's very clever. Um, yeah, you can run the server and you run a client and then you can tunnel I gen uh, general IP over um, over DNS, which is, you know, um, once you start, it's difficult to get back. So um, not, not with IP over DNS, but once you start extending things, you end up somewhere like here. Well, actually a little bit further on, which I'll get to in a minute. This apparently is I, only IPv4, but if you um, tunnel IPv6 through that, you can, you, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, next one is a guy called Jesse Lee, Veggie Defender on GitHub. I couldn't find his Twitter account. Um, the front, the Twitter account, sorry. Um, HTTP over DNS. Uh, this is a thing called browser tunnel. And you can send arbitrary strings over DNS by encoding the string in the subdomain, which is forwarded uh, to the browser tunnel server. This is um, slightly limited, and it, but it does work. The thing, the most scary thing about this is that I think it was maybe Andrew who suggested that you could have HTTP over DNS over HTTPS, which um, is starting to hurt my head a little bit. I I have yet to see someone do a kind of multi-level tunneling over uh, DNS, but I think it's we're not far away. Uh, probably Sebastian Haas or Stefan Bosmeier or Tony Vich or someone's going to do it. <clears throat> this is a great um, example of an actual practical use of uh, some tunneling over DNS. This is an app from the Android store, um, which is called Slow DNS. And it's a VPN that works over D, uh, DNS. It contains ads, and I've not actually tried it myself, and I imagine it is slow. It's called slow DNS. But again, in, in airports and things like that, or anywhere that DNS is not um, um, 
not restricted, which is a lot of places because people don't think that DNS is, uh, needs to be restricted most of the time, this can actually get you full internet access. So um, very cool. And one of these days I'm gonna get a burner phone and try it out, but uh, I still haven't done that yet. Uh, DNS CAT 2 is a package on GitHub from uh, uh, IAGOX 56 or RON. You don't need a domain to you a, a DNS server or, a, or you need a DNS server, but you don't actually, well, sorry, no, you don't need a domain or a DNS server to abuse the domain in the system. So the way this works is that you you start it on a, on a machine and it opens up port, uh, a port that you define or port 53 or whatever. And then you start a client somewhere else and you connect to you know, connect the client to the server and it lets you do just generic um, tunneling. It's got a few built-in features like um, sending messages and, and uh, creating a window. Uh, I think you'd actually send um, text as well, but you don't have to have an actual domain registered, which is the, the cool thing about this. It looks like DNS traffic because it's using DNS packets and the DNS protocol, um, uh, the DNS standards rather, but um, yeah, no of real authoritative server happening anywhere. Um, okay, so I added a new section for the presentation, which is DNS over. And sometimes this isn't quite DNS, real DNS. Um, it's just name resolution, but I'm going to pretend that it is all DNS for the purposes of this presentation. Um, Cloudflare had a bunch of different ways to do it. They've got DNS in Google Sheets, DNS over Discord, uh, DNS over Telegram, and DNS over Tor. The, the Google Sheets one is basically a JavaScript function, which you can plug into uh, Google Sheets. Discord is a, a bot that you can add. If anybody's familiar with Discord, it's, you can add all sorts of different bots. And then this one bot adds a slash dig command. Telegram, uh, you have to add um, a user called 1.1.1.1 bot to your uh, um, to your contacts and then you can send them a message and it will do resolution for you and a uh, tour is using a combination of socat or um ncat um a host file and a local forwarding dns server so basically it forwards to um a tour address a static tour address which can be used for dns and you have to use all the different things to set up the tunnel Uh, but it's not working any well, unfortunately, and there's no more documentation up about it. This is a really cool one, which somebody pointed out on this meeting. Uh, this is ping over DNS. Uh, wait, no, um, DNS over ping, sorry. This works by um, using an oversized packet and sending that. There's a customized version of ping, which I think is, is available that, can, that works. And then you get an error message back from ping that says it's the wrong um, data byte, or that wrong data size. A wrong data byte. Oh, yeah, I think I've written that wrong there. And it gives you a hex dump of the wrong, the incorrect data. And that is the, uh, the, the answer from the DNS server. So the list of IP addresses or anything. Oh, uh, yeah, it's quite limited. I think you can only have up to four IPs re replied. Um, and, you know, it doesn't support the whole of every record type, et cetera. But it's still very cool. Uh, this is, as um, I think it was John pointed out on the on the uh, that on that call, this kind of unfortunately opens up new areas for um, malware actors to to abuse DNS. This is something that I hadn't thought of before is using extra padding, but um, yeah, it's not. I mean, padding itself is a, a fairly well known technique, but with ping and DNS, I hadn't seen it before. Very cool though. I found an example of DNS over amateur radio. So I actually came across this because there was a Clavo uh, did a sort of gimmick uh, for some pre some conference in 2019 where you could um, send uh, a message to someone and then they would like manually look it up for you and reply uh, what the IP address was or what the what the answer was. But then I uh, found some results for a general kind of TCP IP stack which works over ham radio. There's an application called Janos, which does this. Um, oh, and that's just the AMPR. Oh, sorry. Um, there's a, so there's a, a domain AMPR and call signs are set up underneath that. So there's a slash 
um, 8, which starts with 44, and apparently all of ham radio works out of this uh, flash 8, and it's called 44Net, uh, appropriately. So there's a bunch of different uh, systems that can use it, but you can actually do DNS over amateur radio, which is very cool. This is, um, this is kind of where it gets a little bit, maybe it's not quite DNS. Um, this is uh, Wikipedia, DNS over Wikipedia. Uh, actually, what it is is that you can set up a local forwarding server um, with DNS mask, and it will look up the, um, the, the domain .idk, so the domain part of it, um, it will go to Wikipedia uh, and check the um, host name that matches that name. So if you look up Pirate Bay, you'll get Pirate Bay's main website, and then it will get the IP address from that. Um, it's a you know, it's not really DNS over Wikipedia, but it was fun enough to, to list in here, I think. Um, this is an, another one from Sebastian Hans. He has created a um, DNS over signal service. I This is a screenshot from today, because I wanted to see if it was still working. And it does. It's very cool. And it is very flexible, actually. Um, I've, I've tried to break this service and uh, been unsuccessful. Um, so yeah, it works really well. It's been live for a very long time. And uh, you can actually add that number on the screen there to, um, to Signal, and it will respond. It's pretty quick. Oh, I've got that in there twice. Right. And Tony Finch suggested um, DNS over normal unencrypted TCP streams as donuts. And I thought, um, yeah, I think that that sounds quite nice after all these weird things that people are doing. Right, so there's a few other things which didn't really fit anywhere else. These are like sort of bigger projects. Um, there's, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna refrain from commenting on whether these are good or bad. I'll try not to anyway, maybe one of them, but we'll see. Uh, a guy called um, Corey Quinn, he, uh, or Quinny Pig on Twitter and Mastodon, um, he suggested that um, DNS is basically a, a, a record store. So it, you could use, you could replace Route 53, the AW, uh, Amazon Web Services service with DNS. And I actually think that that would work. And I think since then, someone might have done it, although I can't, I couldn't find the, the, the link to it. Um, yeah, so Route 53 is a config management service and it is basically, you look up uh, what's the, um, the value for this, you know, this setting and then like a config file. And um, yeah, <laughs> I don't see why you couldn't do it over DNS. And I think it could be versioned and all sorts. So um, yeah, and he's an expert as well. He, that's what he does. Uh, he works the, the chief cloud economist for the Duckbill group. He's also hilarious, by the way. He did a thing about security awareness recently on Macedon and it was uh, very funny, but informative. There's a thing called uh, BME, which is the brand um, information records, brand indicators. Um, originally I was, I, I, I thought, wow, this is crazy. Why is someone trying to do that? But it actually, I can see some value in this. You know, it's it's a way of storing TSC records, which um, are start with underscore BIMI. There's a certain, certain format around it and you can, you know, put your logo in there. And um, it's a way so that when you get an email from someone who is a registered, um, uh, sort of set this up correctly, you can have a bit of extra information about them. So uh, their logo or icon or whatever, uh, perhaps a URL to the homepage, et cetera. Um, this is an old URL. It should be bimigroup.org, although the script bimigari.com uh, still, still works. Um, yeah, kind of an interesting approach. Another thing that uh, a lot of people have tried to use DNS to, well, to build on its nature of being you know, fast and open and, and always available and do things like this. One of those examples is a, a website called, um, well, the, the company is called Num Technology and they've built a, a, an entire contacts database uh, on over DNS. Uh, they've got some uh, a software development kit. Uh, you can go to numprotocol.com and see exactly how it works. There's uh, NPM modules and docs, uh, et cetera. The example that they've done is to build, uh, they, they've um, put um, the whole of the UK yellow pages in, in, over DNS. And it's, you know, it's a good application of it because it's a, it's a very fast um, record lookup system. 
but it it's sort of verging on the point of maybe um, abusing other people's resources. But I suppose it's up to them, those people, to to uh, figure out whether they're okay with it or not. But I I kind of figure that if this got super popular, then maybe you know Cloudflare and Google might start thinking, well, you know, or we'll start blocking it. I don't know. It hasn't happened yet, I suppose. But perhaps that's just because it hasn't taken off yet. Uh, this is a quite cool. This is a generic key value store running at dnskv.com, and uh, you can. It's a full key value store, so you can um, uh, post values to a key, and it gets stored. And um, it it's a subdomain of dnskv.com uh, by a guy called Sami Lettinen, and uh, he did this a little while ago. He's got a really good blog post up about how it all came about. I think it was almost a challenge to make it make it work at first, uh, but then turned into something quite useful. You can do all the standard things. You can list and uh, list uh, keys. You can push multiple keys at the same time. You can retrieve them. And if DNS is working, then this is working. Um, he renewed the domain for a couple of years, a few months ago, so it's going to be working. Uh, a sub project of this is a thing called DNS Message. Oh, sorry, and this works over channels. Um, it works over the DNS KV service and um, yeah, you can subscribe to a channel. It's a kind of uh, basically a queuing system or, you know, it could be a replacement for RabbitMQ. The, I haven't really looked into the code or how it works exactly, but there's a Python implementation of a listener which will sit on a channel and listen for messages. And uh, it's, it's very cool. It, I love this site because he's definitely not trying to make any money out of it. He's just providing a kind of service and showing what you can do with it, but also like pushing it to the point where it seems it's like, how can he make this useful? Um, so this one I, I quite like. Uh, there's another thing called uh, DNSFS. I, I did this presentation at um, the local DEF CON meetup in London um, last year and uh, so there's a guy called Ben Cox who's done a whole bunch of weird things with DNS. One of them is DNSFS, which is an entire file system based over DNS. Uh, it works by splitting the data into chunks, um, putting it into cache, um, storing it over um, multiple uh, TXT records. And uh, yeah, it it's kind of crazy, but um, it works. Ben was actually in the audience when I did this presentation, which is why I mentioned it. Uh, and uh, he, he, yeah, he, he was. He said he's got other things coming up. So I don't. I just. I don't know what is he's got in the queue. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it, and also um, sort of scared of what he might come up with. He's got. There's a, an example of it using it is streaming an mp3 over dns and there's a him i don't think this particular um uh command line works but it, it did at the time and and that sort of blows my mind really you know an actual file system hosted on dns where you can stream an mp3 over it is it going too far i mean yes but but do we want this in the world uh, i think also yes and that's pretty much it um, there are, as I said, a bunch of links at the end, so I will share a link to this uh, presentation uh, with Andrew and he can pass it on. And that is my presentation. So there you go. Thank you, uh, Peter. And um, whilst you were talking, I admired the comment from Suzanne about DNS over new technology. Uh, with, under the acronym DON'T. Um, I th I thought <laughs> yes. <there you> <laughs> Absolutely. And Don't also do. <laughs> Kurt's observation of, uh, yeah, at the point when you get the yellow pages over the DNS, you actually have a real directory going over the internet directory service, which uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. quite good. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know if anyone has any comments or questions. Uh, there may or may not be any other than some uh, pretty humorous comments in, in the chat, which uh, <laughs> so you can peruse uh, uh, at your leisure while we're talking. But I thought Dote was uh, yeah, admirable. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I assume oh, yeah. that the, the slide deck will be available just because there are some people that really need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, um, I'll send it over to Andrew. I keep a sort of a copy of each version. So yeah, exactly what you saw should be available. Yeah. It'll be available. I'll de definitely share it. Um, perfect. Right, there doesn't seem to be any other questions, but I don't think there need to be for that. That's uh, sort of good to see that the DS continues to evolve, uh, uh, Peter. Re reassuring. Um, at some point, it will break. But I mean, is it is it good to see this that kind of stuff? Because I'm not entirely convinced. But some of the things really do make me uh, question. <laughs> Are we doing the right thing here? But. I would gradually admit it would be kind of element uh, uh, elegant, uh, given that the DNS is used for command and control for malware, that it might just as well be used to, uh, for distribution of the malware as well, just to... Yeah, right. <laughs> efficient use of resources. <laughs> Going back a very long way, the um, code for decrypting, I think it was CDs or DVDs when they were first region locked, was widely distributed in DNS text records. That's true. I should ask that actually. Is the DCSS right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah that was in, that was in all sorts of text records going back yeah. far longer than I care to admit. Yeah, I, I'll. I think I'll add that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you also prompted a few happy memories when you mentioned amateur radio as well. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, oh yeah. I'm gonna have to go and check so, so you'll see. Here is a, the slides are here if anybody wants them. By the way. Fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll add that article as well for anyone that <clears throat> doesn't have a chance to uh, to grab the link now. <clears throat> Thank you, Peter. As always, uh, always interesting to uh, see that. Right. Let me reshare my screen. I've now done. Um, Right, so a quick update on some recent developments. First two items are a reminder. I mentioned these uh, in passing last week, which is there's a last call on the ADD working group mailing list for the Split Horizon um, uh, internet draft. Uh, so uh, please, uh, anyone with any comments, you've got till uh, the 26th to post those to the uh, mailing list. The links are on the side. And again, I'll pop those uh, in the uh, linked page when I send out they linked the uh, uh, recording for the call. Uh, and similarly, uh, there's a call for adoption for the DNS resolver information draft. Um, again, uh, uh, with uh, comments by the 26th on the mailing list. So uh, just a reminder to everyone to uh, uh, put your comments uh, there. Um, and then a new item which I've highlighted, uh, uh, and Neil is on the call, so this is a, a, a tool to support DNR adoption. Um, but why don't I start stop talking even as, as Neil's on the call? Neil, do you want to uh, um, unmute and just uh, expand on the uh, short note I put on the slide? Sure, sure. Um, um, so, so with with a uh, dnr if you look at the um if you look at the draft all of the uh, options in dnr for dhcp and, and router adjustment are binary options so i was looking to and as an author of the draft i thought oh this is easy so i was, I was looking to actually add some of these options to a dhcp server and i realized that actually you, you can't actually just add these options to a dhcp server you've actually got to encode them um so i realized that actually we could do with a tool uh to actually create these options. So I've just created a little go tool. Um, it's on GitHub uh, and you can create a YAML file and it will uh, it'll just read in options for either DHCP version four, IPv4 options, uh, DHCP uh, IPv6 or router advertisement for V6 as well. Um, and it'll spit out hex encoded text, which you can put into common DHCP servers. I've put some configuration examples for the two uh, ISC DHCP servers, the old one and the new Kia one as well. Um, I, the code also, to be quite honest with you, isn't like reviewed by anyone. So if anyone's willing to have a look at the code I've written and uh, verify it for correctness, that would be great. I've done my best even as an author of the draft, but, but uh, you know, there, there could be errors in there. So um, if anyone is willing to have a look at my code as well that would be great or see see what it spits out and check that it actually uh spits out uh, good code then that would be uh, all good 
uh, DHP options, that would be great. So um, yeah, and as I say, it's all on GitHub, the links there, it's completely, I very welcome any uh, PRs or whatever. So, uh, and it's all under an MIT license. So there you go. I, I may at some point uh, create a web page so you can actually just fill in a form and, and get the hex options as well. That's great. Thanks, Neil. And I'll obviously, I'll share the uh, link, and I think there were a couple of others which I should, I'll share after the call as well, so people have got that, um, and hopefully can jump onto the uh, GitHub, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, yeah, anything which helps to encourage the adoption of DNR is is a good thing in my view. So. Uh, um and um, i guess uh, as you said though the more sort of pairs of eyes that have a look at it and uh, give you any feedback uh the, the better really uh, uh just so you get the uh, quality control on there but uh that's brilliant thank you no okay uh let me just move on uh then and just uh i won't go through all of these but just uh highlight a few things from the uh, headlines this week um there are some faqs from wellbone um following the uh, uh call that we had with uh, uh robert uh, this time last week so um, this is on the dns4 eu project um, there's an interesting paper on uh, that's referred to uh, in a, a blog post on APNIC, um, uh, lo just looking at the current uh, development of DNS encryption. Uh, it's it's from uh, a, uh, a research associate at the University of New South Wales. Um, I think I think it's an interesting uh, sort of paper, and I've asked him if he'd like to come onto this call uh, over the next few weeks just to uh, sort of present the highlights from the paper. So uh, if we get that in the diary, I will uh, let people uh, know. Uh, since we mentioned malware, um, there there is a write up uh, on dark reading of um, again uh, DNS being involved. Uh, to help uh, uh, target uh, users via compromised uh, public routers. Um, so those of you that have an interest uh, in, in in that <laughs> side, uh, we'll, we'll uh, find that uh, uh, of interest. Um, um, as, as you will probably, uh, well, one of Peter's colleagues at uh, the DNS Filter, um, just sharing his thoughts on um, some of the sort of content filtering categorization challenges uh, the, 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 that uh, they uh, um, grapple with. Um, okay, I'll let me just skip over. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a, 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 an interview, and this is the Emily's uh, DNS Research Federation. There's an interview with uh, Diane Verley, one of the uh, vice provost. Um, at uh, uh, the American University, just sharing her thoughts on uh, some of the benefits of aggregated data for policymakers, which uh, I think uh, some of you more with a, with a sort of policy bent will find um, uh, also of, of interest. Um, and then uh, a bit, bit about the sort of threat hunting of DNS queries and anomalies, so uh, which I sort of saw on LinkedIn the, the, the other day, a paper on that, which. Uh, uh, I, th I think is certainly worth a, a look. Um, just quickly moving on, we've got uh, a few things coming up. Yeah, so in terms of uh, events kicking in, FOSDEM um, in uh, a week or so's time, a couple of weeks' time um, in Brussels and um, so sort of middle of next month, so three to four weeks' time, you've got NANOG and then OARC, and, and then before you know it, we're um, be in Yokohama for the next IETF meeting. So uh, really things sort of pace hotting up of uh, um, sort of events in, in, in the calendar year. Uh, just a final reminder, if you want to take advantage of the early bird registration for OARC, um, you, you've got till Wednesday um, for that. Um, and you've got till Friday if you have any birds of a feather proposals yeah, you're going to put preliminary proposals for ITF uh, 116 in by this coming Friday. Um, various other deadlines uh, also on the way. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, topics on this call, we've got uh, the, sort of the zero DNS um, uh, sort of, uh, uh, presentation this time next week. Um, 
possibly uh, Dennis Privacy with Speed coming up the week after that, but also um, I mentioned the uh, APNIC uh, paper. Uh, I'll let you know when we have that uh, scheduled and a couple of other topics um, as well. And if anyone has anything you want to add to that list, uh, just drop me a line, let me know, and I'll be happy uh, to do so. I will stop there as we're almost um, on the hour. Um, and just ask, does um, anyone have anything else uh, under any other business uh, in the last sort of two, three minutes? And if you do, either sort of raise your hand, put something in the chat. Uh, equally, if you've got any questions for uh, Neil on uh, uh, on uh, on his uh, uh, utility, um, uh, or equally um, any further thoughts for Peter on uh, just bizarre uses of the uh, DNS. In the last two to three minutes, now's your chance. So either put, sort of raise your virtual hand um, or pop things in the chat as appropriate. Or any other topics that you want to mention before we time out. I'm not seeing any raised hands and uh, not seeing anything in the chat just now. Just give it another few seconds. You might as well put blockchain over the DNS uh, feature. I can think of precious few other uses for it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, matter uh, of time. Yeah, I'm somewhat cynical about the uh, so so called Web three, but uh, maybe that's just me. I'm with you, Andrew. <laughs> of course, I'm saving up for my Apple um, augmented uh, reality glasses, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Definitely. I've got some here, actually. I've got a, uh, not Apple ones. That's anyway, good. That's yeah, that, that would be a scoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world premium, gosh. <laughs> they, they're pretty cool, I have to say. Fantastic. Right. All right. Well, uh, I think we'll uh, call it a day then. We're just about on the hour. So thank you, uh, everyone, for your time. Thank you in particular, uh, Peter, um, for the uh, presentation, and Neil, Neil for the update um, on the code. Um, have a fantastic week, everyone, and uh, look forward to catching up same time next week. So um, speak to you all yeah. then. Bye. Bye.